Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and welcome to another Path of Exile video. In today's video I'm just going to cover my, how my league start went. Um, I actually rolled dice to see what my league starter was because I didn't have anything planned so I just kind of picked one at random. I uh, landed on a cultist, uh, started as Freezing Pulse, ended up settling on Winter Orb, and I'm just going to show the character quickly in a map. It's just a T7 map. Uh, I'm currently I'm currently up to just starting red maps, basically, in the Atlas. And, um, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit lower one so I can talk about uh, various things while I do this. But, uh, yeah, it's been really fun. This has been one of my favorite leagues so far, I'd say. Um, the Winter Orb is alright. I do not have a lot of defenses on this character, uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'm going to show probably, just right away, I'm going to show what my favorite uh, setup is. So, what I like to do is... For some reason, the voices are really loud in this. Shut up, Envoy. <laughs> or Envoy. Envoy, Envoy. Well, okay. Well, I guess we have to wait for him to stop talking. I don't know why it's so loud. Alright, you done? Okay, cool. So, my favorite setup is uh, I like to uh, get ones that, like, roll an additional thing. So, in this case, we could go Scarabs, or we could go... I have some low-level ones here. I'm not so sure they're going to be good. I'll do a little bit higher uh, one. So, we'll just go uh, double uniques. So, we'll start with this, and then, basically, this is going to be really tanky because I have a map mod that gives a bunch of extra stuff. So, I, I got uh, uniques. It'll roll two uniques, uh, but I... One of them was too low level for my loot filter. Um, and then I specifically uh, get Steel Infused, Sentinel, and Toxic. Uh, a lot of people have talked about this already, but the uh, Treant uh, Arch Nemesis is absolutely busted. And you're going to see that real quick here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it right in so you always want to put it as like your second you put the main thing you want to roll as your first in the recipe and then um so then we're gonna go treant uh treant horde i got a decent amount of them stocked up uh looks like i have like seven of them uh, i'm gonna put a higher level one in to like so that if i put other rewards in later Actually, I don't need to do that. I can put a lower level one. Uh, the uniques are mostly just what I'm looking for. In fact, you can kind of lock um, what you want, like if you have uh, something that won't show up. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of uniques uh, from that. And it's going to take me a little bit to kill this guy. Like I said, they're pretty tanky because of all the extra ES. And as you can see, getting a lot of uniques. I'm just going to pick up the ones that I might not already have. I don't think I have a dream feather, and there are a bunch more on the ground as well. Uh, as you can see, it drops just a ton, an absolute ton of uniques. So, got that going. Um, and then the same thing will happen. So what Treant does is it brings up a bunch of little extra dudes that all drop this basically the same rewards. Uh, so if I wanted to guarantee that they were uniques, uh, because I have low level stuff here, I might be able to uh, pick something. Okay, never mind. That's also low level. Um, but I could do that anyway. Um, temporal bubble is kind of a pain though. Uh, I think I'll just put in Gargantuan, get some currency perhaps. Uh, and it rolls out of all the reward types, basically. You get, uh, like, it re-rolls. It'll take the best out of two, and then... Oh, did I kill it already? Wow, okay. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so, as you can see, I got a lot of currency. I got uh, some more uniques. So, you can basically get uh, practically an unlimited amount of uniques this way. Ooh, got... Uh, I don't think that's an anima stone, but it's one of those uh, golem ones. Oops. Primordial Harmony. It's pretty cool. Nothing too great. Um, and I guess we'll pick a porcupine. 
as our last one. Uh, so yeah, I'll just throw in like uh, Echoist maybe. It's got good reward types. Uh, and as you can see, just tons of currency, uh, tons of uniques. It's going to take a while to kill this guy. Uh, he's kind of just sitting there not doing anything though. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, apparently the porcupine was a good thing. I don't know. It looked like he was bugged. Maybe the echoist kind of locks him in place. And we got a lot of chaos, got some fusings, uh, just overall good stuff. And, um, I don't think I have this one. Uh, probably want the engineer's orbs, even though they got filtered out. And yeah, we got some more uniques there. So, uh, that's my setup I like to do. Uh, I try to just create as many tree ant hordes as humanly possible. Um, I'll go over my Atlas setup, but uh, basically it's similar to, but slightly different than my uh, my gambling one that I put out a video on, and I'll kind of, you know, I'm just going to run through and I'll finish the map after I'm done with the video. The rest isn't that important. Got most of everything done. I don't pick up any of the Weavers or uh, the uh, the Hasted one as far as items to pick up because I don't think they make very good recipes and uh, you do have a limited inventory space. So uh, basically I just wait until I get a bunch of tree ant hordes and I pick up anything that has good reward types or any of the like rare setups and I'll kind of use them. And uh, yeah, I'm just permafreezing the bosses here, but they are low level bosses. So that's not super impressive. Okay. Um, and I didn't have that completed. So I get to, do the atlas uh so yeah i guess the first thing i'll do then is go over my atlas passive tree since i have that kind of getting set up at the moment uh, so uh very first thing i did is grab shaping the skies i was going to beeline it for uh corrupted gaze but i did want to make sure that i was getting uh the extra maps so i did get shaping the skies first and then I went up to Corrupted Gaze. Now, uh, previously, my plan was to get this wheel Underground Kingdom next, and I did do that, uh, but decided to spec out of it. And the reasoning for that is there are much better ways to get Abyss Jewels, including the Arch Nemesis, um, in order to get the extra uh, Abyssal Jewels. So this basically makes it so Abyss Jewels and areas have a 20% chance to be corrupted and have five or six random modifiers. Um, there, that counts as anything that's dropped from extra things, whether that be like Scarab, Delirium, or Arch Nemesis. Um, if you, there is an Arch Nemesis recipe that gives two Abyss, uh, things. If you do that with Triant Horde, uh, you're going to get a lot of five or six property Abyssal Jewels per map. Um, you'll usually end up dropping like 20 or 30 abyssal jewels uh if you get the setup you do the double abyssal jewel uh the tree ant horde and then you just put two random things preferably uh you know other good things just in case they drop from tree ant uh or things that basically uh i don't know if there's a one abyssal reward recipe or not but if you could get that as well that would be fine too but you end up getting just an absolute crazy amount of uh abyssal jewels from this setup so uh then of course we got the harbingers uh unspeakable offensive this is really good you don't get a lot of extra currency i've gotten maybe like four or five extra chaos plus some other incidental stuff uh proccing from the currency shards dropped by harbingers and areas can drop as currency items instead however um, the good thing about this is it makes it so that they summon more minions and they summon them faster. So you can kill the Harbinger really fast and just move on. Um, so otherwise you'd have to wait forever as the Harbinger just slowly summons everything and it's really obnoxious. Uh, after I got that, I moved down and got Shaping the Valleys. Um, and then I popped up and got First Wave. So I got all the Harbinger stuff out of the way. Uh, then I picked up uh, this down here, Rogue Trader, with all of the extra Rogue Exile chants going up towards it. Uh, then I picked up the other Rogue Exile stuff, uh, specifically Ruckus, which I've had prop a few times, and they drop pretty good loot. And the best thing is, you can see the Rogue Exiles that have the uh, 
the extra additional rewards because kind of like legion monsters they'll have the reward type hover over their head uh, so you can see them on the mini map and that's really really useful uh, then I got shaping the seas and now I'm going towards legion stuff I'm getting emblematic I'm gonna grab war supplies and face off and I'm gonna come down here and get this uh, legion stuff and lastly uh, monumental so I am gonna go for legion I may swap into something else later but i kind of like doing legion at the moment and my next character that i'm building in an ethereal knives dead eye uh should be really good for farming legion very very quickly so i'm kind of setting up and preparing for that um i just got that character to end game and should be able to get going with that soon so that's my atlas passive passives my actual character there will be a pob in the description below however i don't recommend starting this honestly um this isn't very good defensively and overall i would say it's just not all that great as far as the setup goes but yeah i have uh i have it all set up to where i have uh like i just yeah, it's just pretty generic. I've got like, I go up here, get the spell crit. I think the first thing I did was pop down here so I have enough dexterity to run ethereal knives. So I grabbed like coordination. I got charisma, uh, which allows me to run 250% auras, uh, herald of ice and clarity along with the uh, reservation of skills mastery. I also have additional reservation of skills on my helmet and I'll talk about some of my gear. Uh, most of it is self-found, but I did spend like 30 or 40 chaos on gear. Um, yeah, it's basically just get all the power charges, get all the power charge stuff, get some cold damage stuff. Here's some ice pen. Uh, freeze duration is really nice, especially with occultist as you're just periodically freezing bosses. Um, I've got the divine judgment. I haven't picked up elemental mastery yet. Not sure what I'm going to get. Probably the increased effect of non-damaging elements. Um, or I could get reduced reflect, but honestly, I would still die to reflect even if I got that. And I don't want to pick it up in other ways, so I'll just avoid doing reflect maps. Um, but it's a really simple baseline tree. Uh, just life caster stuff and power charge stuff. So, um, yeah, this isn't anything spectacular. Um, I don't even have a good jewel in my jewel slot. It's literally just lightning damage to spells and life with some strength and intelligence that I don't really need. Uh, I don't think, yeah, that doesn't affect my uh, gearing at all. So, uh, But I am getting a lot of good abyss jewels, so I'll probably uh, sort through those and kind of figure that out after a bit. More importantly, uh, the gear, I got a lot of tabula rasas. While I was leveling, I got three of them before I even hit endgame. Uh, that is because of Gargantuan, which gives uniques and drops fairly commonly. I believe it is Gargantuan. It might be Berserker. It might be both. Uh, but either way, uh, you get that early on. Uh, throw it in. Uh, and then basically all of the Arch Nemesis you do will drop uh, an additional unique. So it's really, really powerful. Um, I got a lot of uniques while leveling, just throwing those in whenever I got them and then doing the whole chain. Um, and yeah, basically got all the uniques I would ever want uh, while leveling. So I got pretty much all the leveling uniques uh, very early. And that was great for leveling up a second character. And yeah, I'm just swimming in tabulas. Got a tabula here. Got one on my other character, um, which I just am going to start mapping on here soon. Uh, got a tabula in here, so... Uh, just swimming in tabulas. Uh, I've just been selling them for divines after that, basically. Um, and then, uh, guess, but I ended up picking up the six link. Uh, it's just got life and some, it's got like evasion decks. It's, it's nothing spectacular. I think this was like 15, 20 chaos. And these kinds of things will go down in price very rapidly. Uh, probably the best thing I got is this helmet. Uh, I found this helmet, crafted onto it, and then I crafted on the new influences, and I got uh, physical damage to spells and increased mana reservation efficiency. Uh, this is really good, and it's going to go great on my uh, Ethereal Knives Deadeye that I'm going to put it on here soon. The extra physical damage with the new 220% damage effectiveness is going to be a pretty substantial amount of damage, and mana reservation efficiency is always good on like every character. Um, 
the jewelry, just stuff I found off the ground. It's not that good. Uh, same thing with this one off the ground. Not that good. Uh, this one I did buy because I need cold leech. I do not have great offense or defenses. I'm running grace, a uh, jade flask. And uh, honestly, that's outside of the freeze and chill, which is a big dam or is a big defensive buff. Uh, that's pretty much all I have going for defense. So this is one of the few pieces of gear I actually purchased along with my body armor. Um, I got this, which has cast speed, crit multi, uh, lightning damage to spells, and a little spell damage. I can definitely do better, but it's not that bad. Uh, my gloves suck. These are awful. I'm going to replace these at some point, but not right now because I'm going to swap to a different character uh, going forward. But... Yeah, these are not good gloves. Um, I, It was the very first item I tried, the new influence thing, which is why I do have influence on them. I, I was kind of just experimenting, and I threw it on this, even though it wasn't that good, just to see what would pop up. Uh, it's giving increased evasion rating from equipped helmets and boots. Um, that's not that big. I don't have that much evasion on helmets and boots, but I guess my boots have a decent amount, I suppose. Um, speaking of boots... Uh, these are pretty good. I've got movement speed. I did buy these um, with just life and movement speed when I got in. And then I did throw the influence stuff on them. Uh, I got action speed. I got exerted uh, by seismic cry deal increased damage. That's not useful. I'm going to reroll that. Uh, but the action speed is really huge, especially because I'm going to have a dead eye, which is already getting increased uh, action speed. But it's nice for this too because uh, cast speed is very important. Winter Orb got buffed to where it has 150% more projectile frequency while channeling. So now like action speed, cast speed, all of that stuff is going to make me shoot just a lot faster. Um, this is pretty huge. Uh, belt. Belt's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not great either. It's just like, okay, it's got a lot of life got some resistance got chaos resist which i really need i did fire care chaos resist uh hybrid craft on here uh my chaos resistance is still negative 26 so i would like more chaos resist but yeah uh shield is not even worth talking about it's really bad but it does got have some uh black spell damage i suppose some life mana bad resists honestly uh, i've just had this since like pretty low level and i've never swapped it out um, so yeah, I managed to get to red maps with pretty terrible gear uh, with this, but yeah, it's starting to fall off and I'm just going to swap it out until I can afford to like brute force some really good gear um, because I have a little bit more interesting gear for uh, the Deadeye. But that's pretty much the character, uh, Jade Flask, uh, it's a bleed corrupted uh, blood immunity flask, uh, got an Onslaught flask, got... Uh, you know, normal Quicksilver. This one gives me some evasion. I could probably do better, but I like the duration. Um, I have a Mono Flask. I don't need a Mono Flask. I should probably get put like a Diamond Flask or something here. Um, I don't have enough to craft all of my... Uh, I don't have enough instilling orbs to craft all of my flasks just yet, uh, but I'm working on that as well. So yeah, that's pretty much my setup. This has been one of the most enjoyable leagues for me so far. Um, I, all of the performance issues are pretty much gone. I might have a lower quality here as far as my video recording of the gameplay because I had to change my OBS settings. I've tried to record videos over the last couple of days and haven't had a lot of dropped frames, but it seems to be working now. So hopefully you see a clear image of my map uh, while I have that going. And that's pretty much all my update. I'll probably do an update once I get to like the end game bosses on my other character. And once I'm zooming through and have some really good stuff going on. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming. Bye.